isometric view. In this video, we will learn how to construct an isometric view using orthographic projections. This is our seventh video on the topic. These are the orthographic projection of the object. To construct the isometric view or 3D view of the object, we first need to create the isometric axis. To do this, take a ruler and draw a horizontal line. Then, mark a center point on this line. Next, take a protractor and mark 30 degrees on both sides of the center point, as well as 90 degrees. Draw lines passing through these points from the center point. The line passing through the 30 degree mark will be the X axis, the line passing through the 90 degree mark will be the Y axis, and the remaining line will be the Z axis. With these three isometric axes in place, we can now construct the isometric view of the object. Next, we need to decide whether to draw the front view in the XY plane or the YZ plane. It's important to remember that the front view should only be drawn in these two planes, and never in the XZ plane. The top view of the object is always drawn in the XZ plane, so that's another key point to keep in mind. In this video, we will be utilizing the first angle method to solve the problem. The figure on the left-hand side represents the front view, while the figure on the right-hand side represents the left-hand side view of the object. To depict the front view of the object, we will draw it on the XY plane. As customary, we will start by constructing the outline for the base of the object. In this case, the length of the base is specified as 150 mm, while the total width of the base is given as 70 mm. Using a drafter, proceed to construct the outline for the base as instructed. Next, in the left-hand side view of the object, we observe that the thickness of the base is 30 mm. To account for this, increase the thickness of the base by 30 mm by drawing vertical lines from each corner point of the outline. Finally, join the endpoints of the vertical lines to complete the base. Following the previous steps, we now proceed to draw the inner slot on the base. The top width of the base measures 50 mm, while the bottom width is 30 mm. Additionally, the height of the slot is 10 mm. To construct the slot, begin by drawing a line parallel to the x-axis at a height of 10 mm from the origin. Then, mark the midpoint of this line. From the midpoint, mark points that are 25 mm away on both sides. Additionally, mark points that are 15 mm away on either side from this midpoint. Finally, connect these marked points to construct the slot. Make sure to include all the required details within the slot. This marks the completion of the base of the object. Now, let's move on to constructing the top portion, which consists of two parts, the center portion and the two side portions. The center portion has a width and height of 70 mm, and it is positioned exactly in the center of the base. We will begin by constructing the outline for this center portion. Next, we notice that the two edges of this feature are chamfered. The dimensions of the chamfer are 24mm and 20mm. To achieve this, we will mark 20mm on top from both edges, and then measure vertically from the top by 24mm on these edges. Afterwards, we will draw parallel lines to the z-axis from these points to complete the chamfers. Following the construction of the center portion with chamfers, we now proceed to draw the two side features. Please note that only the left-hand side feature will be visible in the left-hand side view of the object. In the left-hand side view, 
we can observe that the inclined portion has a thickness of 20 mm and a width of 40 mm. To determine the height of this feature, we subtract 30 mm from the 70 mm height of the center portion, as shown in the front view. With the required dimensions in hand, let's begin the construction process. Start by marking the center point on the side of the baseline. After marking the center point on the side of the baseline, proceed to mark points at a distance of 10 mm on either side of this center point. Then, mark a point at a height of 40 mm from the base and draw a line parallel to the z-axis. Similarly, mark the center point on this line and mark points at a distance of 10 mm on either side of this center point. Finally, connect these points to complete the incline portion. Make sure to add all the necessary details to complete the construction. With this step, we have successfully constructed the side portion of the object. To draw the 30 mm diameter hole on the center portion of the object, we first need to locate its center position. From our observation, we can determine that the center of the hole is exactly in the middle and 30 mm below from the top of the center portion. To locate the center, draw vertical and horizontal lines. The vertical line should be 35 mm away from the side, and the horizontal line should be 30 mm below from the top. The intersection of these lines will represent the center point of the circle. Since the diameter of the circle is 30 mm, we will construct a square with sides measuring 30 mm at this center point. Construct the square as shown. Following the construction of the square, the next step is to draw the diagonals by joining the opposite endpoints of the square. This will create an X-shaped pattern within the square. Next, connect one of the diagonal endpoints with the adjacent endpoint. Similarly, connect the other diagonal endpoint with its adjacent endpoint. These lines will intersect with the diagonals and form four points. Using these four points as centers, draw arcs as shown in the diagram. These arcs will form the curved edges of the circle in the isometric view. Additionally, using these two points as centers, draw arcs to complete the circular shape of the hole. By following these steps, we successfully draw the circle in the isometric view of the object. Do the dimensioning of the figure. This is the final required figure. I hope this tutorial helped to understand how to construct the isometric view of an object from its orthographic projections. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up by clicking on the like button. And if you're new to my channel ADTW Study, make sure to hit the subscribe button to stay updated with all my latest videos.